Welcome everyone to the third video in how to build a browser-based MMO version 2.0. Um, the kind of got our design set up and everything in our first two videos, and now with the third video, we're really going to push into kind of a, a the, the coding, real coding aspect of it, more into the setting up our database and everything because we can't really do too much more design until we really get our database classes and things like that set up and. Don't be daun daunted by the, the word classes. I'm, I'm going to make it real easy for you. <clears throat> Matter of fact, one of the one of the lessons I learned with the first and most of my video tutorials is that if I try to type it out and go through a large section during a video, we end up in either me mistyping something, the user's mistyping something, and it becomes this, and it also extends out the, the videos way longer than they should be, and it, it it, most most everybody almost downloads the source anyway. Those that, that just kind of follow along and type with me ends up with just headaches. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of pre-type a lot of stuff and then go through and explain it really well. That way we don't spend as much time typing it out. I don't have to worry about answering a lot of use the wrong bracket or whatever. And to be honest with you, it just works better. Um, you can, I mean, if you want to type it out, you can type it out as long as I or as I explain it. But I, I just don't see a benefit in it. What I do see a benefit is kind of, you know, we still are going to type out a lot of things, but for the most part, I'd rather just write some of the classes and then we go through and explain it, you get the source, and then we move on to where we can actually get into the, the meat of the game and building it your way and things like that. So it just it's just going to work out easier. So in this tutorial, we're definitely going to work on some some classes and get, getting the database set up, and it's going to be real simple, very simple. So what I did, let's go ahead and look at our structure here real quick. Um, so now you see a couple more folders that I have here. You see scripts, um, there's really one more, and then PHP, we're eventually going to have a JavaScript, and then I've got a couple things in here. I've got config, our DB class, and then i got a test call in here that we can just play around with. Um, the first thing we want to do, though, is create our database. So whether you're new to WAMP or not, um, if you're new to WAMP, you can go ahead and do it. But if you're not, just go to... Uh, or if you are new to WAMP, just click on, uh, this will be your uh, left mouse click, by the way, your first mouse button, and then hit PHP My Admin. This will bring up, if you come up with a login, just put root and blank. If by chance the blank doesn't work, whatever you use as a password to set up your, your WAMP is what you want to use. Mine was just root and then blank and then go. Um, so we definitely want to build a new database. So I'm going to go to Databases and create a new one. I'm going to call this one, I'm just going to call mine MMO Tutorial. You are more than welcome to call yours. Whatever you want, just remember what you call it. Create. Now we have a blank, uh, basically a, a blank uh, database here. What I do want to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and create just a table. And we're just going to call it uh, Test Table for now. Just We're just going to do some tests. And we just want, let's do two columns. Uh, yeah, let's do two columns. Go. And then we'll just call this ID... And it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we'll call this a name. And we'll make this an integer, or I'm sorry, of our character. And we'll just make it six. Doesn't really matter. Um, let's see. This is just a, a this really doesn't matter. Uh, let's do, um, that should be good for now. I'm not too worried about, we could do a, um, Primary, that's fine. Auto increment, we'll go ahead and do that. So click auto increment ID name, and we'll be done. Hit go. And whoop, I'm sorry, that adds an extra one. Actually, we want to hit save. Now, what we want to do now is just insert, and we're just going to insert ID. You don't have to mess with, but name. Let's just name it. Uh, let's go ahead and call it um, say test one and test two. Okay, and then we will go, and that will just basically, it just entered two rows, and if we hit browse, you'll see that we have ID 1, 2, test 1, test 2. Basically, auto increment just increments as we add more to it. We will get into more SQL-related stuff later. As far as learning it, for now, we're just building up a, a sample table so we can kind of do some tests on it. So let's open up brackets, and really... Go ahead and download the source. If you don't want to download the source and just write it as we go, then you're going to create this PHP, the scripts, PHP, and then a config.ini. Let's go ahead and look at it, which I've already got it open. Basically, this all this is is our config file. 
um, I want to change this because I was doing some tests. So this is, so your username is going to be root, passwords, whatever password you logged into this, uh, your, your MySQL, mine was blank, and then whatever you named that database. Save it. <clears throat> Next thing you want to create is the database class. Now, like I said, this looks a little daunting, but don't worry about it. It is very simple. We are using classes here. We are using object oriented uh, programming, but it's pretty simplistic once once you get into it. So, uh, basically, the, this class name we have. Or we opened up our PHP, so all this is PHP in here. <clears throat> our class is just called DB database, and we have this protected static uh, connection. Not so important, but basically, it's it's the overall connection, so we don't have to continue to every time we call this. So when we do call this class, we get the connection. We only have to call it once. We only have to connect to the database once. But because of the way we're doing it, that's going to change. We won't worry about it right now. I don't want to confuse you. So these right here, all they are is, think of them as functions or just basically methods that um, that run that we can call inside this class. And we, you will understand it as we go along if you don't know. Most of you probably do. <clears throat> um, so we got a public function called connect. So this is what we call to do our database connect. And all this is doing is it's basically grabbing that config I and I and then building a connection out of what, whatever we have in there and creating that connection. And so it it will um, it just basically returns the connection. Simple as that. Not important. You're not going to have to do any editing, I wouldn't think, on that. So it, to be honest with you, it's not super important right now. I'll tell you right now, I'm used to this is um, this is basically uh, MySQL I and I'm used to MySQL today is the first time I've ever touched MySQL I but it's it's amazingly simple it's pretty much the same thing it's just a little different so it um, for those of you that are coming from MySQL don't worry don't worry about it too much it's it's pretty close to the same thing um, if not the same thing I, I haven't seen too many differences yet so the next thing we have a we have a query um, this basically We'll run a query. We pass the query into in there. So for those of you familiar, this would be where we pass select all from test where something equals something, and it does that query for us. We have a um, select query, and then we have a um, error. So when we error, we want to return the, the the SQL error that comes out. That was something we didn't. I didn't do a lot in the last tutorials. Is have some good error catching, so people were really confused. I'm going to make sure to do it in this tutorial so you can breathe easy. And then we have a quote. Now, what quote does is, is it basically, um, you can for MySQL injections, you can actually insert certain characters and really mess with people's databases. There's a function called real escape string which removes those, and we want to do that with everything. But we don't want to have to do it every time we run a. Um, we run a query so the class actually will just take care of it automatically for us so it basically I don't want to say automatically we do have to still insert it in there but it's very simple compared to having to rewrite this the whole time so <clears throat> the big key here is I don't want to spend a lot of time explaining this um, and going over everything because it's not super important you're not really gonna have to fool with any of this for as far as inside of here it's basically a class that you can use in, in many ways. You can copy and paste this and other things too. So don't spend a whole lot of time worrying about what's there because you will learn it as we go along. Just know that this is how we're going to connect to the database. Next thing I have is I have this test call. We are actually, so this is a good example. So we included the file dbclass.php. So basically any when, when this script is called, it's automatically going to insert our, get our db uh, class. So now we have access to that db class. We can do, we can create a new variable and that's basically it's a new class so we're turning that variable into an ins in, uh, instantiation of that class then we're going to we're going to do a select right now it's blank so what we want to do is select let's do let's do a select all first select all from uh, what was our we call it test I think right Yeah, from test, yeah. So, and then select all from test. Let's just do that. And what that's going to do is for every one that it finds, which is going to be two of them, it's going to turn it into rows. Rows is now an array of every one of these that it finds. Now, for those of you that don't know what JSON is, JSON is basically a way to encrypt, or not really encrypt, a way to, um, I guess you could call it encrypt data, um, 
it basically compresses it to where you can transfer back and forth from the server to the client and not have a whole bunch of data. Back in the old, old days, the way I used to do it was I would have long HTML strings and I would just put commas in, in between things and then I would, I would break it up. I would basically split it by the comma and then turn it into an array on the client side and then have to parse it all. With JSON, you don't have to do that. It pretty much turns everything into objects for you and if you're confused of what I'm talking about, don't worry. You will understand by the end of this whole section, so don't worry about it. So anyway, we're just going to return whatever this finds. So pretty simple script. Um, I will, I will kind of drop a diagram later on how exactly we plan on connecting from. There, there, there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can do it like the old days where we just call PHP right in our HTML, or but it would be, I mean, our index.php. But the the best way to do it, the new way to do it, and you can do it real time and not have to refresh the page, is what we call AJAX, and that's what we're using jQuery for as well. AJAX is a way to call PHP without having to refresh the page. What makes that nice is we can have real-time updates. We can do um, database queries without having to refresh at any time by pressing a button, by just, we can even do polling, a lot of different things that we can do. So we're getting into a lot of complicated um, uh, new, new, new areas here. Don't worry about it. Like I said before, this gets real simple after we start using it a whole lot, but we do have to build this in the beginning. So what I have here is I have, in our index.html, I did add one little section here, and it's our JavaScript section. We will eventually remove this and putting it into its own file. That way it's, it looks a little better, but for now, we're just doing a test. So what, what this does is this calls a jQuery function called Ajax. Everything in here is going to run, so you, you point the URL to where we want, which is our scripts, PHP, and that test call. So whenever you do that, it goes out and it runs that file. Anything echoed out um, from that file will get sent back to Ajax, back to your page. Um, data type is JSON. It's a post. We could do git and actually put a question mark here and just like our git methods if you know what that is, but we're, not, we're actually going to use JSON data for that. We have no data to pass right now. No big deal. On success, it's going to send, it's going to come back and we're, it's going to call anything returned is just as a simple array called data. We're going alert it to alert it to the page so that way it, we, we can see what it is. That's all I'm doing right now. Eventually we're going to turn that into actual you know, stuff on the page, but for now that's what this does. So unless I made a mistake, everything should work fine. So let's go in and let's refresh. And looks like we didn't get anything, so let's see what we did wrong. Uh, let me go back. So we were calling our test call, our data. Let's go to our test call. Select all from test. Let me make sure that we did that right. So let's go to our um, tutorial. There's our test table. What am I missing here? Select all from test. Did I save everything? No, I didn't. There we go. There we go. So it passed two objects. Now, of course, all we see is the objects here. So if you want to be able to see exactly what's in there, let's let's do something instead. There's two ways we can do it. I might as well go ahead and show you guys some, some things with Chrome for those of you that don't know. If, you, if you're working on your backgrounds and you go to refresh and nothing is changing, it's because it's not, um, it's, ca it's caching all of the, the information, all of your pictures and stuff, and you have to kind of hit refresh a whole lot or empty your stuff. All you have to do is go into your settings. <coughs> no, I'm sorry, you don't have to go to settings. Hit F12 on your keyboard. Hit the settings here and click this disable cache while dev tools is open. If you check that. If you have these dev tools open, when you hit refresh, it'll automatically clear the, clear the cache and make it much easier for you to do stuff. When you close it, it goes back to normal. One little hint that I wanted to give you guys in the last video I forgot about. Um, so the second thing we can do, let's leave those open, is we can actually, instead of alerting that, lo log them to the console, and that way in the console, we can, um, we can see exactly what those are. So let me show you how that works. Let's, do, let's go back to our index.html. Instead of doing an alert here, let's do console.log data. And that'll alert that'll go make it go to the console. We won't have our alert anymore, but when you hit refresh, you'll see now we have an object object. We have two objects. When we open them up, ID one, name test one, and then the second one, two, test two. So <clears throat> what's neat about that is that we refresh because I don't have any button attached to it, but there if we do attach a button to it, every time we hit that button, it'll run this. 
to where no more refreshing. We can do real-time data now, so it makes things a lot easier. The nice thing about this, in one video, we got our database class set up. I'm hoping you guys understood it. If not, feel free to ask questions. I can, you know, or let me know comments, and we'll go through it again, which we'll be going through it anyway. But we got all that set up to where now we can actually start, you know, really. Now we can start building the map, making the players, that kind of cool stuff. So I just want to get that that out of the way, and I think we're ready to go.